Hey guys, long time no see. I'm back here again and I intend to be doing a lot more of these videos uh, with somewhat of a plan and structure. Not in this one, of course, but the next one. We'll just always say that. Um, today I want to go over just kind of a, a brief look at choosing injectors because that's one of the most common questions that we get is what are the best injectors? And the last couple videos I did on OBS trucks, um, this is kind of going to be the same thing for Super Duty trucks, um, really how to make the first step forward. If you just need to replace the injectors in your truck, um, should you upgrade them? And if you do upgrade them, how big should you go? What size should you go with? What brand? All that. So I'm going to briefly cover that. And this will be specifically for soup duties but it's basically the same information as for obs and super duties other than i'm going to cover some of like the extra components you might need to make that work uh in a super duty truck like fuel system and tuning and all that because uh, it is going to differ just a little bit uh, especially on the smaller scale but in this case right now we're going to talk in the let's say uh you just need to replace injectors where should you go from here which is a totally different thing than wanting to make power so let's get into this. So the basics are this. Uh, the, there's kind of a couple questions you, you have to answer yourself um, before you know what injectors to get. So uh, let's say, you know, if you like, we need to know whether you have a work truck, like if this is something you rely on to make money, then that's a different conversation than uh, someone who just daily drives their truck and they have a backup vehicle or uh, they just only use it for towing or you know, um, the other thing, maybe you just, you drive it just on the weekends to go to Home Depot or the dump, uh, maybe drive it a few times during the week. It's not important. Or you drive it every day to work, uh, but it isn't your, your primary moneymaker. Um, those things can matter. And reliability is what matters in those scenarios. So not always, but in general, the closer you can stay to stock, the better. It's, it's the best bet for making sure you're you're not going to be stranded somewhere without the ability to get new parts. Let's say you've got a work truck for a minute. Let's say that this truck uh, is a hot shot truck and uh, you do rely on it every single day or it's a, it's a construction vehicle. You, you use this. This is your money maker. If it goes down, you lose money. Um, if that's the case, should you upgrade injectors? Uh, maybe you've got a, a billet wheel, you've got a shift kit, you've got a you know super chips, maybe you've got a hydra in it, I don't know. But for the most part, it's, it's fairly stock and nothing but maintenance has been done to it. In general, I would say probably you shouldn't upgrade the injectors. If they need to be replaced, go ahead and replace them with something that's like a good quality um, stock replacement. If you want a little bit more power, maybe consider doing something like KC Turbo's you know balanced turbo assembly, which I'll cover in a second. Uh, maybe you'll get something like like a like a, a nice drop-in charger, something that's going to spool fast and get uh, still keep good responsiveness, but it's going to be easy to replace if something ever happens and the truck goes down. Um, that may be acceptable. Uh, maybe add tuning, but in general, the things you sacrifice by upgrading injectors uh, and then the components it takes to make them worth it. Um, it's not a good idea in the end if you need to make money with your vehicle. So generally where I sit with that is just focus on reliability and just go a little bit slower on the grades. Not always, but in general. So let's say that you do, you do want to. You're in that same kind of scenario um, or, or you're, maybe you just uh, you use the truck purely for towing your camper with your family and that's it. Maybe you take it out you know, 10, 20 times a year and, but when you do, it's, it's away from home and you do need reliability still. Uh, you don't, I mean, most of our wives probably aren't too happy if we break down because we modified our truck and spent money doing it that they probably didn't want to spend anyway. So, yeah. So let's say we're in that scenario. Um, but you do want more power. Um, let's cover what that would look like. I would stick with nothing more than a typical stage one and a half injector. So a 160-30 to a 180-30, something in that range. So it's gonna be an A-code injector with a 30% nozzle. Um, that's the big, as big as I would go. But I would argue that it's probably not worth it to even do a stage one and a half, and it may be even better to stay with a stage one, so like a 160-0 injector, because the benefits you get going to a 30% nozzle are not going to be there 
uh, and hardly any scenario you're going to use the truck in. If it's just a work truck, it's just towing, uh, the only time a 30% nozzle makes a big difference over a stock nozzle is pretty much when you're in a high load, you know, high pulse width situation. So it, like in a race tune or very close to it at very near wide open throttle, that's about the only time that a 30% nozzle is going to do something that a zero or a percent of stock nozzle uh, uh, wouldn't do. In this case, I would say like, we'll, we'll look at both, but strongly consider staying with a stock nozzle because there's not, not much worth it to go more. Uh, and the other benefit is, and it's not as much as on an OBS truck, there's a lot more benefits on an OBS, but uh, a 160 zero or a stage one or an AC code, it's all different names for the same thing, is an OEM size. Not for Ford pickups, but it was for uh, mostly like buses, uh, international vehicles with T44Es, stock injectors in most, most series. So um, the nice thing with that is, you can get an AC code injector from a tractor supply or a, um, I don't know, a cat, cat dealer, international dealer, some Ford dealers carry them. They're readily available. So if you're away from home, which is the main thing I want to focus on here, if you're going to be away from home a lot and you're traveling and you need reliability, just because you bought new parts does not mean that they can't fail. Obviously, we hope that your injectors won't fail. We hope your turbo, your fuel system, whatever, something, your transmission isn't going to fail. Um, but it happens. And it, even if they're new or you know, reman, it still could happen. So you want something that is replaceable easily. And you don't have to wait for you know, weeks or months to be able to get a replacement part. Um, or even days in some scenarios where you, you would lose money by being down. So staying with an AC code injector, at least that's something if you had to get one to replace it, even though it'd probably be expensive, you can get one and you cannot do that with anything else that's bigger. So that's something to consider. So let's take a look at, uh, let's go shopping for a, um, for this work truck that is determined to upgrade when you get new injectors. All right. So early 99, late 99, basically is going to be the same thing. The turbos are different. The pedestals are different. The up pipes are different. The plenums are different. And other than that, basically everything's the same. So uh, there are usually the same type of replacement parts. They're just going to be like a part for an early 99 instead of a late 99 to 2003. So we're going to look at a late 99. So we have a typical, um, uh, you know, the stock replacement, a single AD. Um, the AD codes are the factory size for a late 99 to 03 truck. Um, and if you're looking to go that route, that's a good way to go. Full four stage ones, unlimited uh, stage ones. Let's take a look here. These unlimited diesel stage ones. Uh, these are the same. They're equivalent to an AC code. Um, they're a 160 zero and they will fit the bill for what we were just talking about. So we're looking at about $1,200 for these injectors if you go with a reman. There's another option you could go with. You could do Alliant, um, AC, Alliant AC codes. So let's take a look at that. So $1,200, let's open this in a new tab here. $1,200 for remands. Um, that's gonna be the same case for uh, Unlimited Diesel and Rosewood Diesel. I think they're about the same price um, for whatever they call their premium remands um, and full force. It's all gonna be right in that same range for remands. Um, and then we have the Alliant AC codes are gonna be right around $2,000. And the Alliant ACs are brand new. So the only thing that's reused on a, on a reman or should be, every builder is a little bit different, but the only thing that should be reused is gonna be the bodies themselves. So if we open this here, the bodies themselves. Um, so right here, if you can see the cursor, um, not the nozzle, just the bodies and then the solenoids. Everything internal and the nozzles and the O-rings, that should all be new. And really the bodies aren't gonna fail, like unless they get like, sit out, you know, the bottom of the ocean for 10 years or something and you pull them up and they rust, you know, maybe they feel dead. But in general, the bodies are fine. Um, the solenoids are the most common failure we see um, on remands. As long as they're tested before they're installed and they're tested properly, then probably you won't have problems with them. But um, they are, a, a an electrical component so at some point they may fail but it's an easy replacement you don't have to pull the injector to replace them if they do so um so basically if you're getting alliant ac codes all you're doing is you're getting the same thing 
uh, as a good quality reman, uh, but they are completely brand new with new bodies and new solenoids. So you could get a reman that just has new solenoids and it would have the same function and be right about the same price. So for those of you who just, you want the absolute best, no matter what the price is, Alliant, that's the way to go. And that's the only new ones you're gonna get. Everybody who sells a new uh, injector is pretty much gonna be an Alliant. All right, so stage ones. What do we go, what do we have to do to make stage one injectors or 160 zeros or AC codes work in your work truck? Um, tuning. That is all you have to have to make it work. Although the only time that adding fuel is gonna make a difference power-wise uh, is gonna be if you have air to use that fuel effectively. So we highly recommend if you're gonna upgrade injectors doing something with the turbo, uh, if only even to address the surging issues the stock turbo has. So a lot of you who have even just tuned your stock truck, uh, you've probably noticed that you get kind of like a flutter, um, like it'll go like, you know, like a, listen to me make this sound, like a from the turbo when you're like under load, maybe in like a pot tune or something, pulling a grade. You could fix that pretty easily by just doing something like um, a, uh, a pretty much anybody's billet wheel um, for these trucks for a stock turbo. That would fix that problem, maybe help with EGTs a little bit, but probably not a ton. It would be a small upgrade. My, what I would say a bare minimum would be uh, like KC Turbo's balance assembly. So like a billet wheel and KC Turbo's um, S300 turbine wheel for the stock turbo. That's a, it will work good. It'll be a decent bump in power, but it's not gonna be a, a big bump in power because, so think, think about this for a second. We've got, we've got, we can make another 100 horsepower or so on stock injectors, on AD code injectors that came in from the factory in your truck. But the problem we run into is like, if you try to like run your truck in a race to and it gets too hot, so you can't tow with it. So really all we're doing, if we're keeping a stock nozzle or even really a 30%, because there, there isn't the big difference, um, you're, all you're really doing is you're just getting more fuel out we're not really going to be able to cool it any better. We still have the same amount of fuel and it still takes about the same amount of time to get that fuel out. So this is kind of my argument for not upgrading your injectors when you just work with your truck and focusing more on the turbo or the air side and then just tuning the truck and leaving it at that. There, there always work like that. There are benefits to going with bigger injectors, but there's also a lot of benefits such as having a better turbo on stock injectors and it's going to be more reliable and it's going to be easier to find a replacement if you ever need one. So anyway, back to this, uh, a balance assembly. So we could do, let's go ahead and add these to card. Um, when it comes to tuning, uh, if my recommendation is always to use a PHP Hydra if you're going to have uh, upgrade injectors or you know built transmission or bigger tires at any point. And the reason for that is because Tuning is an email away with a Hydra. If you ever need changes, if you need revisions of any kind to shift points or lockup or the way it idles or anything, uh, they can be emailed to you from almost anyone who tunes 7.3s supports that platform, um, which no other chip offers. Most chips, there's only a few people who can tune them. And every other chip for these trucks um, is does not support tuning via email. Uh, easily without having a burner if someone will even send it to you. So with a Hydra, you get the ability to get tuning emailed from lots of different vendors and it's very fast. So especially if you're gonna have upgraded injectors, I highly recommend getting a Hydra, even if you have another chip right now, it's worth it. So in this case, uh, say we don't have a Hydra, we're gonna go ahead and add a, add a Hydra from us. Tuning is free. You just need the Hydra itself, which is $300. Um, you pick your core charge. I'm gonna send my cores back later. Uh, yeah, I'll submit the tuning form. So we have your truck info. Uh, I agree to the terms and shipping. And uh, I'm gonna add that to the car here. All right, I'm gonna continue shopping. Okay, what's the next thing I want? I wanna get, um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the bare minimum build. All right, so we need a balance assembly. Wow, if I could tie it. There we go. Casey Turbo's balance assembly. 
Okay, so basically, like I was saying earlier, what you get here is um, you get a their billet compressor wheel. It's a dual plane wheel, so you can see um, we have taller fins and then we have shorter fins. And like I said, ask a turbo builder or a physicist or something why that matters, but it does. It fixes it. So it's going to be more efficient wheel. It's going to be a little bit bigger than stock. It's going to help with EGTs a little bit. It's going to fix the surging issues, which is the main thing. Um, but the other thing is they actually have a better turbine wheel. No other turbo manufacturer makes a better turbine wheel for the stock turbos on a 7.3. And this is designed, it's kind of modeled after the, um, the Borg Warner SXE lineup, which is like kind of like the, the gold standard for uh, for draw or for T4 mount turbos for most people that go that route on their trucks. So it's a great way to go. Drops into the stock turbo. It's four hundred fifty dollars. It comes with a the turbo rebuild kit and everything you need. Um, it's it's a it's a good way even on stock injectors to just get more out of your truck without spending a ton of money. So that's we're gonna go ahead and add that too. So we'll select our truck year. Um, it's a ninety nine to three. It is not an early ninety nine. Um, I don't need a compressor housing O-ring. I don't need a heat shield. I don't need more turbo bolts because we got a couple extras in the kit and we'll add that to the cart. Okay, continue shopping. Okay, so now we've got the turbo. Uh, we've got the injectors and we've got the tuning taken care of. What else do we need? Well, that's all we need. That'll do the job. But if you haven't yet, there's a couple more things I'd recommend. If you haven't done up pipes and you haven't done a blank pedestal, do those right now. So we need to get a blank turbo pedestal. Let's see what we got here. Blank pedestal for the 9903, $112. All right, so what this does is it gets rid of the exhaust back pressure valve. Um, well, it doesn't get rid of that. It gets rid of the rod that actuates the valve. And this is one of the most common places for an oil leak on a 7.3. Now, uh, what happens is on the stock turbo coming out of the side of the pedestal right here, there is a, um, a, a oil actuated rod that opens and closes the valve that's on the back of the turbo. And that the, the exhaust spec pressure valve or the EBPV valve is what people refer to it as, um, opens and closes. It's supposed to close when it's cold to help the truck warm up. Uh, but the problem is that like over time, those seals will start leaking and that's that's just no good. But now you have a chip. You have tuning and we can we can send you a tune that idles the truck up and that'll help it warm up so you don't need that valve anymore. So definitely get a blank pedestal while it's apart. Don't deal with oil leaks anymore. Let's just fix that right now. So we'll add that to the cart too. Okay, let's continue shopping. And we're gonna need a couple more things. So we need uh, the second half of the back pressure valve delete which is gonna be the high flow outlet. What that does is it sits, it's the, it's the valve itself that sits on the back of the turbo. That's what opens and closes. So we need a high flow outlet that's gonna get rid of that valve. And you can do this yourself too. If you wanna DIY it, just look up uh, DIY uh, EBPV delete. And uh, yeah, EBPV right there. EBPV delete. And um, there's lots of tutorials how to do it yourself. So it's pretty easy with a freeze plug and a drill and a grinder and it takes about 10 minutes. So, uh, high flow outlet. Let's, uh, we need the 9903, so this style right here. And simple enough, we'll add that to the cart. Okay, and so that's the second to last thing. One more thing we're gonna want is bellowed up pipes. The stock up pipes use a pipe that runs right from your manifold uh, up to the collector that sits behind the turbo and the thing that's going to be like a huge son of a gun to get off when you pull your turbo out that's the part it goes into the collector and all it has is just a donut gasket that sits uh, between the collector and the pipe for when the pipe you know heats up and cools off it expands and contracts and eventually that donut gasket is going to wear out and it's gonna wear the pipe out too, so it's going to start leaking exhaust and you're gonna start losing boost, you're gonna start having higher EGTs, and you're gonna start getting soot all over your engine bay. So while this whole thing is apart, go ahead and replace the up pipes. There's two things to consider for that, okay? One is you could go cheap. Basically any set of up pipes that's gonna be between the like, I don't know if you know what you can get them for, $20, $50 on Amazon, 
uh, all the way up to around like 170 ish dollars. Um, they're basically all the same thing. They're all made by Dorman or made by the company who makes them for Dorman. And they work uh, for a lot of people. They don't work for a lot of people. They aren't good. Like, if you get them, you get them installed and the, you, you get, maybe you have to get better hardware, maybe to do some dremeling on the collector to get it to fit correctly. Um, they can work. So if you're just on a tight budget and you have to go that route, well, then do. But in this case, um, I, I, I think the best bang for the buck is to go with BD diesels. Um, let's see. Let's see our pipes here. We need, so these full force ones, are just, they're just Dorman, same thing. Um, BD diesel, minus nine and a half to 03, there we go. So they're $373 versus, like I said, anything from like 50 to 170-ish. Um, they're a little more expensive. They are actually stainless. Uh, I think they're, they're um, 304 stainless. I might be wrong about that, but they are stainless. Uh, they come with good hardware, not crappy hardware. Um, and the way that bellows work is um, the expansion and contraction happens in the bellows and it's actually bolted like with a steel gasket, like an MLS gasket um, on um, the top side and then just a, um, a flange on the bottom side. I don't know what the term for that is. Whatever. You, you fabricators. Everybody's going to be mad at me on this one. But whatever that's called, it makes a good seal. Um, and then, uh, so the bellows expand and contract. And then what you want with bellows is, and this is something the Dorman ones didn't used to have, what you want with bellows is you want it to still have a sleeve, like the pipe to run up through the bellow. Um, it's just not attached at the top. So it can, it can wiggle a little bit. And that's where the expansion contraction happens um, rather than through a donut gasket is going to wear the pipe out. And these work fantastic. Uh, they're a little bit pricey, but absolutely worth it. And you won't have to deal with exhaust leaks anymore. So this will be the last thing that we need. So let's take a look at what we've got in the car here. Okay, so we got our injectors, unlimited, fantastic company, $1,200, $300 for the Hydra, the tuning is gonna be emailed. Uh, the, balance, the, the balance assembly for the turbo, that's gonna give us a rebuild, new O-rings, new seals. Uh, the billet compressor wheel, an upgraded turbine wheel, that'll be okay. It'll be okay for those injectors. Um, and it's, like I said, kind of the bare minimum. Um, and then we have a we have the blank turbo pedestal, no more oil leaks. We have the high flow outlet to get rid of the valve so it doesn't stick. And then we've got bellowed up pipes so we don't have any more exhaust leaks coming from there and hopefully make it so we don't have to pull this back apart again. And altogether, we're looking at about $27 to $2,800. It's gonna be right in that range. So this would get you up and running. It would get you a solid bump in power. And like I said earlier, the way to look at horsepower is this. Fuel determines how much power you can make, like ultimately how much power you can make. And then air is gonna determine how much of that power is gonna be usable and where it's gonna be usable at. So basically choosing injectors really just needs to fit within the range where you can effectively make power. And then picking a turbo is gonna determine how much of that fuel we can use where we're not gonna run into temperature problems like EGT exhaust temp problems. Um, and then how fast that turbo is gonna spill up. Usually the sacrifice is uh, if you have a faster spilling turbo, it's gonna run a lot better. You can't make as much peak power without temperature problems, but like normal driving, towing, stuff like that, a uh, little a bit lower RPM is gonna do better. Going with a bigger turbo uh, is gonna be a little bit laggier. It's not gonna be as responsive, but if you're carrying a little bit higher RPM, you can usually uh, get more airflow through the turbo, um, especially from the exhaust side with some of like KC Turbo's drop-ins. Um, and we can make uh, we can make more power without temperature problems just at the sacrifice of response. So what I like to do is I like to pick something that's gonna sit in a range where it's gonna be a, a good balance of both. So you know, under, under $3,000, we can have a really nice setup that's definitely gonna give us a bump in power. Um, ultimately, like in a race tune, this setup will probably make, you know, pretty close to uh, about a uh, 200 horsepower over stock, uh, over a bone stock truck. And then towing wise, you know, probably get us in like the 260-ish horsepower range, 250-ish horsepower range uh, without having like temperature issues, which is, you know, probably 60 to 80 horsepower or so over stock without temperature problems.
The other thing that we can do is uh, we can swap out, instead of using this balanced assembly, uh, we can go ahead and delete that from the cart. Um, we could do a full drop-in. So let's do uh, KC Turbos stage. Man, if I could spell. KC stage one, and we need the 99 to 03. This is their 6368. So it's a 63 millimeter inducer compressor wheel um, and a 68 millimeter exducer turbine wheel. And uh, it's, I think it's a perfect charger to match with anything from uh, uh, stock injectors that you wanna get the most out of all the way up to like a 18030 injector. So a stage one and a half injector. I think it's a really good match. Um, it's a it's a fairly fast spooling turbo. It's not gonna have surging issues. It will you know probably get us up you know maybe from like the balance assembly in the 250 ish horsepower of usable horsepower range up to maybe closer to like 300 horsepower of like usable horsepower without a sacrifice of spool up time. So this is a great turbo. It's a little more expensive. It's gonna be a, you know a little more than double the price of just doing the balance assembly, um, but it is uh, a very good charger. And if you can afford it, this matches very well. Um, I would use the 0.84 housing no matter what. Any any injector that's going to work well with this is gonna, you're going to want a 0.84 housing for it. We'll do a standard cover, not a polished cover. We'll add that to the cart, and let me view the cart here. Um, the other thing to know with the KC Turbo, if you go this route, is they come with a high flow outlet already on them. So all of the all the KC Turbos come with a high flow outlet. You don't need to buy that. So that does save us about eighty dollars right there. So let's go ahead and delete the high flow outlet too. We don't need that. So here we go. Injectors, tuning, a hydra, the blank pedestal, we do still need that, up pipes, uh, and the KC Stage 1 Turbo, under $3,400. This, I think, for a towing setup, if you wanna go bigger than stock injectors, is just about as good as it could possibly get on a budget. We can spend more money and make some better, you know, some better power, but uh, is it worth it? Uh, worth is uh, is kind of determined by you. So we can spend more money, but I think this is probably a good way to go. All right, one more thing we can talk about. What if we just go ahead and upgrade the injectors a little bit bigger? What if we want to do a stage one and a half injector? Well, we could do that. So like I mentioned earlier, the reasons why I would do just a stage one, there are some benefits to it. But if you spend more time, you do want to be able to play, you want to be able to make another, you know, 50 or, you know, 60 horsepower more than a stage one will do when you're in a race tune uh, and still, you know, effectively do about the same thing when you're towing and working the truck. Um, we can go ahead and we can go up to a stage one and a half. So let's do, uh, let's check out Unlimited's, uh, Limited Diesel's uh, 17530s. Uh, we have a couple different brands, but, and there's other builders out there too, but we this is just who we sell. Uh, let's do stage 1.5. My gosh, I cannot spell anything. Okay, so we've got uh, full force uh, stage 1.5s. This is going to be a, a 160 30 or a 180 30. Um, $1,400, $1,395 for a set, uh, $1,575 for unlimited. Um, Unlimited has a lifetime warranty against manufacture defects. Full Force has an 18 month warranty. It's, it's up to you which one you prefer. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll, go, we'll do the expensive route just so you can see. Um, same thing, we're gonna choose a PHP Hydra with tuning. Uh, we'll send our cores in later. And yes, we agree to all these. We'll add this to the cart here. And let's view and edit the cart. All right, we can get rid of the unlimited stage ones, delete that. I guess that's the other thing too, is it's actually less than the 2700 we were looking at earlier, uh, or the 3400 we were looking at, because $250 of that will be refunded as a core charge later. So here we go. Stage one and a half injectors, the drop-in, KC turbo, up pipes, and a pedestal. This is what you would need to put it together. If you go this route, this will be a very solid towing setup barring what I mentioned earlier, uh, it will make about, uh, you know, 200, 220-ish horsepower more than stock. And 
um, it will still be able to tow very well. Um, the other th couple things that I would think about doing, and I would do this whether it's a stock truck or I would do it whether it's, uh, it has an, a setup like this, and up, up to about this point power-wise, is a couple of fuel system mods. Now I've got Riff Raff pulled up here um, because I wanna show you something. Um, really there's two things when you wanna address. Um, it's gonna be a hutch mod or a sump for the tank. Basically that's gonna be inside tank mods that, that get rid of the screens and fix some of like the issues that we can have um, inside the tank itself. And then maybe add a filter between the tank and the pump so that we've got an actual like fuel water separator there. And I'll show you that here in a second. But the other thing we wanna address, address is the top side of the engine. The way that the stock system works is, um, it's called a deadhead system is probably what you would have read uh, if you've been reading forums and stuff in the past, is you've got fuel that comes up to the bowl and then it feeds the heads and it only feeds one end on either side and then it just stops at the other side. It doesn't, it doesn't pass through the heads. So the fuel comes into the bowl, feeds the heads and whatever isn't used um, is regulated back through the bowl, back to the tank, not through the heads. And the problem that can come with this is um, like if you get air in your system, which really if that's the case, you should probably address that problem instead. Um, but, uh, but you don't get proper pressure under load uh, with the stock system at the ends where it's not being fed. So we can fix it one of two ways. We can either get fuel to pass through the heads and return to the tank. That's the most common way, which most regulated return systems work like that. Um, and the other way we can do it is with a four line feed that CNC fab offers that rather than returning, you know, passing fuel into the heads on one end and then returning it, you know, through the heads and then returning to the tank, it feeds all four corners and then just uses the bowl to regulate just like it did stock and send the fuel back to the tank from the bowl. So um, the, the cheapest way to do it is gonna be the, the FRX from Riff Raff, it's their fuel rail crossover. So I don't sell them. You can go to Riff Raff, you can type that in, the fuel rail crossover um, under $200. And this will, this will just get fuel uh, passing through the heads. It'll get rid of the deadhead issue. It'll keep pressure up. And this is a cheap way to address that problem. Do this while the turbo's out, because the turbo has to come out for it. At least it makes it a lot easier. The other way we can do this for the top side is the four line feed kits uh, that CNC Fab offers. So four line feed, here we go. And you can see, these are, this is a bad picture. I need to get better pictures of this. Um, so we can see we keep the fuel bowl and then uh, we have a block where we can, we're gonna feed all four corners uh, instead of just regulating out, um, you know, or passing through the heads and then regulating back. Um, so this is another way you can do it. Doesn't matter to me which way you go. Uh, personally, I think the four line feed is a little bit nicer. Uh, I do like having, uh, hard lines on top of the engine. Everybody has their preference. I can't tell you what the best route to go is. Everyone's gonna have their own opinion too, uh, but both of them will work. Both of them will address the fuel system on top of the engine. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select this because this is what we have. So 9903 truck. Uh, I wanna keep the fuel bowl. Yes, so $275. Let's add that to the cart. I didn't wanna do that. All right, so we got the fuel. All right, part I mentioned earlier, addressing the things in the tank, and I'm talking fast because I want to get through this and not bore you too much. Um, so Driven Diesel makes a pre-pump kit that it's it's the hutch mod. It gets rid of the screens in the tank. It fixes the all, all of the issues that we have inside the tank. Um, you know, you build new lines and everything to go in there. It comes with all the stuff you need. It's a complete kit. It works awesome. It's everything from the fuel pump back into the tank, and it comes with a filter. It's a good way to go. So... Let's look at the pre-pump kit here. All right, uh, Hutch Mod pre-pump, 9903, $209, $210. And it's basically, it's it's just all the pieces you need to do, like I just said. So, uh, and it has a fuel water separator. It's a 20 micron filter that sits in between. Uh, great way to go. If you do a four line feed or FRX uh, uh, pre-pump kit and all these other mods, this is a fantastic way to have a really reliable setup. And I definitely recommend, if you can afford it, doing the doing these mods. And again, the fuel system stuff doesn't have to happen. It's just best to do it uh, at some point. Uh, I would do those, like I said, even on stock injectors for your tow rig. So go ahead and add that. Let's see where we're at price-wise. Real quick, view and edit cart. What do we have? 
4244. Uh, basically, it's going to be $4,000 for all of that for a complete setup once you get your core charge back. And this is US dollars. So if you're in Canada, it's going to be like, I don't know, 10 grand because, uh, you know, exchange rate isn't fantastic. Okay, so that's all the stuff we want to talk about here for building a 400 to 420 ish horsepower truck, everything that needs to go along with it. The one other thing I'll mention, and this is so controversial. Everyone's gonna have their own opinion is the transmission. If you have a manual transmission, what I recommend is South Bends. Uh, I think it's a Con OFE is, is the part number for it. It's their organic ceramic, their 475 horsepower clutch. That will work well with either one of these setups. It's not too grabby. It works well, um, even towing. Uh, it, it's not too much more grabby than an, than an organic clutch. Um, and it will hold the power fine usually with this setup. Uh, it's about $920. Matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and pull that up real quick. If you're bored, you can leave. You don't have to watch the whole video. So uh, let's go to transmission and clutch here for the 9903. Uh, clutches and clutch parts. People rate everything in stages. I hate it. It's really a terrible way of doing this. All right, 475 horsepower in their stage three clutch. Uh, with a flywheel, it's going to be the 92150 with flywheel. Yep. So 60 FEK, sorry, 1994, 60 FEK for the Super Duty trucks. Um, this setup works great. <clears throat> and I, I really think that it's about as good as you can get um, for a clutch to work on the, for this, this power level. Um, anything here and down, really. Um, on an automatic truck, what I recommend is this. Um, if it's a very healthy transmission, you have low miles, there's nothing, no extra material in the pan, um, you can definitely benefit from a shift kit um, or, and a converter, a torque converter. Um, but if you've got a lot of miles on it, I wouldn't bother doing a shift kit and a converter. I think it'd be kind of a waste of time and money to do that. Um, what I would do is I would add a, um, I would just drive it until it fails or you're ready. And I would just run it, um, you know, maybe in milder tuning or whatever, if you're worried about it. Um, and then just have the transmission built properly when the time comes. And that's going to be the most, that's going to be the biggest expense. Like it's, it's probably going to cost as much as the whole rest of the build does. Uh, but buying a good transmission and, and I would count on paying probably right around like 35, let's say between like 3000 and $4,000 to get a good transmission. That's actually going to handle that power. Well, um, especially for towing, um, anything that's like, you know, if you're like 2000, 2500 bucks, you're probably not going to get a good trans for that. So just keep that in mind. I can't, I mean, there's too many ways people build them, but just count on spending that money if you want something that's good. Just because you spend it doesn't mean it is good, but it's the best way to make sure that you do get something good is to at least make sure you're spending enough money that it could be. So uh, South Bend Clutch, um, this one works fantastic. Um, transmission, if you want to do a shift kit, I, I really wouldn't do a converter ever unless it fails and then just, you know, build the trans at that point if you can. Um, it's not worth paying a shop to do that, in my opinion, especially because your trans is going to fail eventually anyway. But um, if you go that route, you want to do a shift kit, uh, you want to do it the easy way, you can get an accumulator body that's already built, so it already has a shift kit in it. It doesn't, it doesn't do everything a complete shift kit would do, but it does, um, it does help shifts with better shift valves and better springs and everything that is going to firm up and quicken the shifts. And this is really easy to replace. It's just like you drop the pan, uh, you drop the filter and you take, you know, all of these, these bolts out, there's going to be two nuts, one in each corner. Um, and then, uh, and then you just drop the old one, stick a new one in and put the pan back on, fill it up with fluid and you're done. Um, that's going to be about $250. So I'm not going to add that stuff. That's, it's really just kind of your preference, what you want to do with that. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So that covers everything I would do for a, for a work truck where you do want to make more power. Um, if you have a work truck, you want to stay with stock injectors, then I would consider all of the things I just said, minus the injectors, and that will get you a very, very good setup. It's going to be easier to find injectors if they fail. So that being said, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have you know questions or comments, post them below. I'll be happy to look them over. And if there's something that's you know relevant, I will try to answer it. And if you have suggestions for 
better videos or more content, I'd be happy to listen to that too. And hopefully I'll come back to making more of these more in the future. We'll talk to you soon.